Snow was falling. It covered the palace and drifted onto the ebony windowsill, where the queen sat at the open window, busy at her embroidery. She glanced at the snowflakes and, distracted by their beauty, accidentally pricked her finger. A spot of red blood dropped onto the soft white snow. Oh, how I wish I had a daughter, with hair as black as this ebony windowsill, with lips as red as blood, and with skin. As soft and white as the newly fallen snow, she said quietly to herself. By the following summer, her wish had come true. The queen held in her arms a beautiful baby princess with hair as black as ebony, lips as red as blood, and skin as soft and white as the newly fallen snow. She named her Snow White, and she grew to be the kindest, prettiest girl in the kingdom. We have a very beautiful daughter. Her hair is black as the ebony window. Her lips are red as blood, and her skin is as soft and white as the snow. She will be pretty when she grows up. Well, there's plenty of time for her to grow up. We need to give our baby a name first. There are a couple of names I can think of, but if we put our heads together, we could come up with a beautiful name for our daughter. How about Rose? No, almost everybody in the kingdom named their daughters Rose. How about Sweetheart? It's a beautiful name. No, we need an unusual name. Hmm, Snow White. Snow White, I love it. Finally, we have found an amazing name for our princess. Nice. I have to go now. I have a lot of work to do. All right. I need to sew a dress for my baby. She will always wear the prettiest outfits. Can you please play with Snow White until I'm done? Thank you. You are really a good babysitter. I just finished her dress. Let's try it on. Let's try on the blue outfit. Very well. It's exactly what we need. Okay, it's time to sleep. Can you help me put the baby in the cradle? Good night, my little princess. Sadly, the queen became ill and died. The king was heartbroken, but after a while, he fell under the spell of a very beautiful enchantress and married her. He did not know how jealous, vain, and wicked she was. Every day, she would gaze into her magic mirror and ask, "Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the most beautiful woman of all?" The mirror would reply, "Of all the women." That were ever seen. You are the most beautiful, dear queen. This made the vain queen happy. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest in the world? Of all the women in the world. What happened? The mirror is broken. We need to connect the crystals to make the mirror come back to life.
Now, the mirror is as good as new. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the most beautiful woman of all? I've been mended, but all my reflections got mixed up. Can you find Snow White among them? This is Cinderella. She is kind and hardworking, but she is not in our story. This is Snow White. Of all the women that were ever seen, Snow White is the fairest, dear Queen. It is impossible, Huntsman. Your Majesty. Take Snow White into the forest. Tie her up to a tree and leave her there. But, Your Majesty. No buts. If you disobey me, you will lose your head. All right, as you say. Your Majesty. The Queen hated Snow White because she was pretty. Then one morning, the magic mirror replied, "Of all the women that were ever seen, Snow White is the most beautiful, dear Queen." This made the Queen very jealous. She called for her huntsman. Take Snow White into the forest and leave her there, tied to a tree. The huntsman was afraid of the Queen, and so he set out to do as she had ordered. Where are you taking me? Asked Little Snow White. To the forest to see the animals. Replied the huntsman. When they were deep in the forest, the huntsman turned to Snow White, saying, "The wicked Queen wants me to tie you to a tree and leave you here to die." But don't be afraid. I won't harm you. Snow White looked at him with tears in her eyes. Run away, dear Snow White, and never return. He told her. He then left Snow White alone in the forest and rode back to the palace. Snow White ran far into the forest until night fell. Frightened and tired, she lay down on a bank of sleeping primroses. A family of wild rabbits came and snuggled up to her to keep her warm, and she fell fast asleep. I'm so sorry, Snow White. I'll be leaving you here. Don't return to the palace, or the Queen will punish both of us. Goodbye, and thank you for sparing me. Now I'm alone in this deep and dark forest. How do I get out of here? I will help you get out of this thicket. Follow me. Who is it? I can't see anyone. Can you see anybody? Where should I go next? I know the way. Follow me. So. Where should I go now? I'll take you to the kind dwarves. Their house isn't far away. Let's go. Look, this is a cottage. I hope someone could help me there. I want to thank the animals for their help. Can you help me find the animals? Thank you very much, Rabbit. You are welcome, Snow White. Thank you very much, dear. My pleasure, Snow White. Thank you so much, Squirrel. I'm always happy to help. And thank you, kids, for helping me. In the light of the morning, she saw a little cottage nestling amongst the trees. Smoke was puffing from the chimney, and a narrow path led to a tiny oak door. I wonder who lives here. She thought. She knocked lightly. Knock, knock. No one answered. But the tiny oak door swung open. Snow White entered. Hello, is anybody home? She called. The room was empty and silent, except for the crackling of a little fire. She looked around and saw how small everything was. There were seven little chairs around a small oak table, laid with seven small mugs, seven tiny plates, and seven small loaves of bread. How sweet! She said to herself. This must be the home of seven little people. She noticed that the room was untidy. The floor was in need of a sweep, and the fire was almost out. Maybe they won't mind me staying for a while if I do some cleaning for them. She decided. Then she set about tidying the hearth and putting more wood on the fire. She dusted and swept and scrubbed until the room looked sparkling clean. Tired and hungry, she sat down in one of the little chairs. I wonder if they'd mind if I had a little of their bread and water. She thought. Not wanting to take any one person's portion. She had a sip from each of the seven mugs of water and a tiny bite from each of the seven loaves of bread. 
She then went into the bedroom, where there were seven little beds. Again, she set to work, tidying and cleaning. After the last bed was straightened and the room was sweet and fresh, she lay down, exhausted, and closed her eyes. It was nearly night time. She didn't mean to fall asleep, but she did. If at that time she had looked through the window, she would have seen the owners returning home. This tiny cottage belonged to the seven dwarfs, who worked in the nearby mines digging for gold. As it happened, Snow White was sound asleep when they returned. The dwarfs came in and noticed how bright and clean everything was. How strange, said one. How clean, said another. How odd, how lovely, how fresh, said the others. Someone's been here, said the last. Look, someone has eaten our bread. Oh, oh yeah, they all said together. Who could it be? I think I know, said the smallest of the dwarves. Look in there. He pointed to the bedroom. The dwarves crept in and were amazed to find Snow White asleep on one of their beds. How beautiful, said one. How lovely. How sweet. How pretty. How charming. How delightful, said the others. She shouldn't be here, said the last. At that moment, Snow White awoke and explained all that had happened to her. The dwarves listened and were horrified as she told the story of how the wicked queen wanted her dead. How terrible, said one. How wicked. How cruel. How artless. How frightening. How evil, said the others. We must protect Snow White, said the last, and he blew his nose on a big red spotty handkerchief. Snow White, you are welcome to stay with us for as long as you wish, he said. And sniffed as he put his handkerchief back into his pocket. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Replied Snow White happily, and they all joined hands and laughed and danced until they were quite out of breath. So from then onwards, Snow White lived happily with the dwarfs. She helped them cook and clean, and was loved and cherished by every one of them. The seven dwarfs are kind and hardworking, but they don't have time for housekeeping. We need to clean the cobwebs, sweep the floor, and fix the cabinet door. Can you help me? I guess we can clean the cobwebs first. Good job! Now we have to sweep the floor. Good for you! The floor is shiny as new. Let's fix the cabinet door. Good job! We need to set the table before the dwarves return. Help me set the cutlery. I remember the days in the castle when the maid set the table. Let's see if I can remember how this is done. No, the fork has to be on the other side. No, the fork has to be on the other side. Now the cottage is warm and clean and dinner will be ready soon. I couldn't have done all this by myself. Thank you. Back at the palace, the vain queen gazed into her magic mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, Of all the women that were ever seen, Snow White is the most beautiful, dear queen. The queen was horrified. Snow White? Snow White? That's not possible. Snow White should be dead, she screamed. Snow White is alive and so beautiful that your beauty in comparison looks quite dull, added the mirror. At this, the jealous queen turned green with envy and red with rage. Tell me, mirror, and tell me right. Where can I find this beautiful Snow White? She demanded. She was invited by dwarves to be their guest, and now lives in their cottage in the deep forest, the mirror replied. The queen had a wicked plan. She covered the rosy side of an apple with a fatal poison and disguised herself as an old peddler woman. Then she set out to find Snow White. 
she walked up the forest path that led to the dwarf's cottage and knocked on the tiny oak door. Knock, knock. The dwarves had warned Snow White never to open the door to strangers when they were away, so she popped her head through the open window. Apples for sale. Juicy sweet apples for sale, said the peddler woman. No, thank you, dear lady, answered Snow White politely. Oh, please just buy one from a poor old woman. These are very sweet and tasty. Look. The old woman took a bite from the green side of the apple. They are perfectly safe to eat, she said, handing Snow White the rosy side of the apple. Won't you try before you buy, dear girl? Snow White looked at the rosy apple and was tempted. She smiled and took a bite. Suddenly, the colour faded from her rosy cheeks and lips and she fell to the floor as if dead. The wicked queen gave an evil scream of delight and returned in haste to the palace. Standing before her mirror, she asked, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? The mirror replied, Of all the women that were ever seen, you are the most beautiful, dear queen. The wicked queen was happy. Oh! Who is this beautiful girl? This is Snow White, Your Majesty. The jealous queen, her stepmother, poisoned her. She has slipped into a deep sleep. Let me try to wake her up. I would be grateful, but first you need to open the three locks in the coffin. I'm too old and do not remember how to do it. Help me open the locks to wake up Snow White. Try to find the same colours. We did it! Thanks for your help. She is so beautiful. We must wake her up. But how do we do this? I don't think that's a great way to wake Snow White up. No, it won't help. That's right! Love is stronger than witchcraft. How long have I slept? Thank you, Prince, for waking me up. I have never seen such a beauty like you, Snow White. Let's go to my father's palace and get married. We can rule the kingdom together. What about these sweet dwarves? Can we invite them to our wedding too? Pardon us. We won't be able to come. We have a lot of work here. But we prepared a gift for you, Snow White. Oh, where are the gems? I think we have lost them along the way. Let's find them. Well done. We another gem found. Great. There's... And another one. Yay. That's another one. Well, all the gems are found. Thanks a lot. Please accept our humble gift, Snow White. Oh, how lovely. Thank you so much. I will never forget your kindness. That evening... The dwarfs returned home to find Snow White lying dead on the floor. Oh no, said one. How tragic. How sad. How heartbreaking. How terrible. How wicked, said the others. Whatever shall we do now, said the last, and they all wept. The dwarfs loved Snow White and laid her in a glass coffin on a hill overlooking the forest. Her beauty is there for all to see, said the smallest dwarf. Each day... The dwarfs took turns to watch over her. Then, one day, the prince from a nearby kingdom came riding by. He saw Snow White lying peacefully in the glass coffin and fell in love with her. I have never seen such sweet beauty, he said. The smallest dwarf told him how Princess Snow White had been driven from her kingdom and poisoned by the jealous queen. The prince was saddened, and lifting the glass lid of the coffin... He spoke to Snow White, saying, I shall seek out this wicked queen and bring justice to your kingdom, dear princess. Then he kissed her gently on the lips. At that moment, Snow White began to breathe and the colour came back to her pale cheeks and lips. She opened her eyes and when she saw the prince, she knew that she loved him. A royal wedding was planned and everyone in the land rejoiced, except... The jealous queen, of course. 
She turned green with envy and red with rage, and then simply exploded into a pile of dust. So it happened that the prince and Princess Snow White were married and lived happily ever after.